Hello everyone and welcome. In this week's video I'm going to be explaining how torque transfer occurs in torsion limited slip differentials. So torsion limited slip differentials have something called a torque bias ratio. What a torque bias ratio is, is a ratio of a number say 4 to 1 that one tire can transfer that much torque over to the other tire. So if, it, if a torsion limited slip differential has a torque bias ratio of 4 to 1, one tire can send four times the amount of torque it has to the other tire if needed. So what does this look like? Well, here we've got an open differential and here we have a torsion limited slip differential. Now the open differential and the torsion limited slip differential are both sitting on the same patch of ice. One tire, the left tire, is on the patch of ice and then the rear right tire is sitting on pavement. So we have 50 pound-feet of torque available to send to either to, to the rear tires. But because this tire is on ice, it can only uh, put down on the ground 5 pound-feet of torque. So it can only use 5 pound-feet of torque out of that 50. So because this is an open uh, differential, and open differentials split torque evenly, the other side can also only put down 5 pound-feet of torque. So the combined total that an open differential can put down in this scenario of its power is 10 pound-feet of torque. Now, if we had a torsion limited slip differential in the same scenario, what we've got going on is you've got 50 pound-feet of torque available. Once again, because this wheel is on ice, it can only deliver 5 pound-feet of torque. However, because this is a torsion limited slip differential with a torque bias ratio of 4 to 1, the other wheel can supply 4 times that amount of torque. So, on the right side, we can have 20 pound-feet of torque for a combined total of 25 pound-feet of torque. So, as you can see, a torsion limited slip differential in the right scenario can put to the ground 2.5 times the amount of torque that a open differential can. So it's a great thing. So what we want to know now is how does a torsion limited slip differential allow that variance in torque and allow one side to send torque to the other? Well, just like our other types of limited slip differentials, you need some sort of resistive element in there so that torque can pass to the other side. For example, when we talked about a clutch type limited slip differential, the clutch packs hold together the two axles. So as one tries to spin free from the other, it can't because this clutch is holding them together. And so it transfers torque to the tire that has more tr traction. So how does it work with a torsion limited slip differential? Well, same idea as the clutch, you have to have some sort of resistive force. Now, with the torsion limited slip differential, you've got four main frictional contact points that are going to create that resistive force. The first one being the connection between the worm gear and the worm wheel. So the worm gear and the worm wheel. So as this worm gear is rotated, it's being pushed by this worm wheel, and that worm wheel pushes a force on it, and that's this green arrow here that's pushing against that tooth on the worm gear. Now, that force there pushes this uh, worm gear forward. So as that worm gear pushes forward, it's pressing against this other worm gear. So that's another one of our contact points. We've got the worm gear face pressing against the worm gear face. So these two cylinders here are pressed against each other because this force here is pushing this one into that one. And so that's going to create a frictional point right there and it has to overcome that friction in order to spin. Also, this side here is going to be pressed against the differential housing. So it's going to be like this where that force there is going to be pushing this, this direction because it's got a component in the horizontal axis and a component in the vertical axis. So it's going to push it against the differential housing and then you're going to have another frictional contact point that you have to overcome. The last point is where these spur gears are pressing up against the differential housing. And so you've got the differential housing like this and these spur gears that want to rotate like that if one side is going to spin faster than the other. And so it has to overcome that frictional force in order to do that. So those are the four forces that have to be overcome in order for one side to spin faster than the other. And the combination of all those forces is what gives you this torque bias ratio. So, 
how do you change the torque bias ratio? Well, there's a couple things you can do. First, you can vary the worm gear helix angle. So that's this angle right here, the angle that this force comes in on. So if you make it a, less, a more gradual angle, then the torque bias ratio is going to go down because the horizontal component of this force, of a force going down like this, is a lot less than a force going in like this. So because you're decreasing the horizontal force, we've got our lovely equation F equals mu n. The combined frictional force you have to overcome is decreased because this normal force, this force that you're pushing against the wall, has decreased. So you have the frictional coefficient is the same, but the force you're pressing against it has changed. So the total frictional force has gone down. Likewise, you can increase the torque bias ratio by altering that angle to make it more steep. So when it's more steep, it's going to have a greater force pushing in, and it's going to have a greater force pressing against the... So you've got the frictional coefficient and the force pressing against that differential housing and between these two worm gears. And so with that being increased, you're going to increase your torque bias ratio. So most uh, torus and limited slip differentials are going to be somewhere in the range of 2.5 to 1 to about 6 to 1. Now, the other thing that you can do is you've got all these frictional points, so you can alter mu. Mu is the frictional coefficient. So if you alter the frictional coefficient between any of these contact points, then you can change the torque bias ratio. Obviously, if the frictional coefficient goes down, then the torque bias ratio goes down. If the frictional coefficient goes up, then the torque bias ratio goes up. Here's the really cool part about torus and limited slip differentials, is when you turn it in reverse, what happens is your thrust load reverses. So suddenly you're pressing these two worm gears in the opposite direction, and now they're pressing up against this side of the differential housing rather than this side of the differential housing. Well, what you can do is you can change the frictional coefficient of this side and of the other side to be different so that your torque bias ratio when you accelerate is greater than your torque bias ratio when you decelerate. So when you slam on the brakes, you don't have quite the lockup that you have as when you have when you slam on the, the gas pedal. So you'll have a better torque distribution um, when you're accelerating hard and when you're slowing down in a corner, you'll still allow for one tire to rotate at a, a greater speed than the other since you're turning and the outside tire wants to turn faster. So I hope everything in this video made sense and if you would like to know more about how the torque transferring occurs and the math behind it, then I'm going to link a PDF in the description which goes into great detail of all the equations used and how you can determine uh, the different torque bias ratios. So thanks for watching.